Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is also about application of Laplace transform. And here we'll solve practice problem 15.3 from the book Engineering Circuit Analysis. Just to recall the steps that we follow. Transform the circuit from time domain to S domain. Solve the circuit using nodal analysis, mesh analysis, or any other techniques. And then take inverse transform to go into the time domain. So, uh, just like the previous video, I will just follow the same steps. First of all, this is the circuit given here. No energy is stored at T is equal to 0. That means initial condition is 0. And we have to find the currents I1 and I2. So converting into the S domain, 3UT, the voltage source can be written as 3 over S. 2UT, another voltage source can be written as 2 over S. The capacitor 1 over 4 can be written as 1 over SC. Putting in the value of C as 1 over 4, it will become 4 over S and the inductor SL can be written as S because L is equal to 1 from here. So now we plug in this value. So this is our Laplace domain or S domain circuit that we need to solve. So this is the circuit in S domain and now let's solve it by mesh analysis. So taking the uh, writing the KVL equation in the first mesh, we go from one corner, so minus 3s, minus 3s, then the two are covered by I1, so we will write 4 over s, 4 over s plus 3, multiplied by I1, and since uh, I2 also covers 3, so we will write minus 3, I2 is equal to 0. I hope you know how to write the mesh equation. And we just arranging the terms. This is the term for I1, this is I2 and this is the constant term. So this is our equation number 1 for mesh 1. Similarly, we write for mesh 2. Again, we go from here So 3 and S covered by I2. So 3 plus S I2 minus this one is again covered by um, I1. So we will write it minus 3 I1 and the constant 2 over S. And from here also we arrange the terms. So this is the final equation uh, for mass 2. Now we need to solve for I1 and I2. So we will uh, write them in matrix form. The variables I hope you know. This one here minus 3 here, this minus 3 and 3 plus s and the two currents and the two constants from here 3s and minus 2 by s. So this is the matrix equation. Now you know that we have to find delta and delta 1 and delta 2 to find the values of current i1 and i2. So let's first find delta. And I hope you recall that we have to multiply this minus we have to multiply this. So we get this equation for delta. And solving step by step, you just pause the video and go by step. So this is the final answer for delta. Then delta 1, you know that the first column is changed by the constant. So we have changed that by the constant for delta 1 and this also we solve in the same manner. So this multiplied minus this multiplied and solving we get this value and finally it is 3s plus 3 divided by s. So this is delta 1 and similarly delta 2 we now change the second column and solving delta 2 
and the final value of delta 2 is 3s minus 8 divided by s square. I have done all the steps. You just can pause the video and follow it. So we are here. We had found out delta, delta 1 and delta 2. And now we'll find the current I1. You know the current I1 is delta 1 divided by delta. So plugging in the values of delta 1 and delta. And then solving S and S gets cancelled. So we get this equation. We want to take three common cancelled. So this is the equation that we are getting. Now remember our aim is to get the denominator of this form or this form. So we'll manipulate it. So we write this as uh, 2ab form to get a square. So from here s plus 1 and this becomes s plus 2 whole square plus under root 32 by 3 whole square. Now the denominator is of this form now but the numerator is not. We got to have either s plus a or omega form that is s plus uh, 2 plus 3 or 32 by 3 form. So let's manipulate it further. So 1 can be written as 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3. We separate the two terms s plus 2 by 3 divided by the denominator plus 1 by 3 divided by the denominator. And now if you look this one, this is matches this exactly. But the second term does not match with omega. We, need, we got to have an omega here. We got to have that is under root 32 by 3 here. So for this further manipulation, what we do is 1 over 3 we take common. We bring under root 32 over 3, which is required, and then divide by that. 1 divided by this will be 3 over 32. So these two gets cancelled. And now we just multiply this 1 over 32 under root 32. And now the equation is of a perfect form. You can see this, the second term is also matching with this. Omega s square is at the bottom, or omega at the top. So we were here. Let's see. We can do further manipulation. This can be written as under root 2 over 8. No change here so far. But it is better that uh, we write under root 32 by 3 in this form. So 4 under root 2 divided by 3. If you, if you solve this, it will become 32 over 3. And so all the omegas we are now writing at 4 under root 2 over 3. So this is the only change that we are making. And now we apply the formula to go into the time domain. So I1t will now be, just look at this, this is exactly matching the bottom one cosine omega t so e a t now a is 2 by 3 so our uh, e a t will be e minus 2 by 3 into t or minus 2 t over 3 cosine of omega our omega this is our omega so cosine of omega plus this constant under root 2 by 8 e raised to the power minus 2 by 3 now we are applying this formula and sine omega t. So this is the answer uh, for I1t in time domain. Now let's go for okay <clears throat> now for I2 again uh, we have these values that you found. So for I2 we we'll write delta 2 over delta plugging in the values and simplifying we come to here now this is difficult than the first part because we now have an s also in the denominator so we can write in the partial fraction form a over s plus b s plus c and the square term 
and now we'll take help of a algebraic method of for solving these constants so we multiply by the denominator this the whole thing so on the left hand side we'll have 3s minus 8 this will be a 3s square plus 4s plus 12 and with this we'll multiply s now we solve this equation first is we equate the coefficient of s square so here there is no square so we'll get zero this multiply by a so s square will be 3a and here b s multiply by s will be b s square so the coefficient is b and from here we can say that b is equal to minus 3a so this is our equation a now we equating the coefficients of s so from here you will get 3 this one 4 multiply by a so 4a and this one c from here that means c is equal to 3 minus 4a so this is the second equation and now we're quoting the constants so constant is minus 8 here and 12a from the right hand side that means a is equal to minus 2 by 3. Now that we have found a, we plug in the values of a and these to find b and c. So b will be equal to 2. And similarly c will be equal to 17.3. So we had the value of a, b and c. We now plug in these values into the equation for I2. So plugging in the values, we get this value. A minus 2 by 3, 1 over S. This is B and this was C. Now we take 2 common from the numerator and 3 common from the denominator like this here. The first, time, the first term remains same, no change. 2 by 3 so this is the term and now you see there is change now we had solved this formula in the uh, uh, part 1 that is for i1 and we got this result in terms of our uh, square terms so I have just plugged in and if you have doubt you can just go back two slides and see how it was done and here also the aim is the same that either we should apply this formula or this formula so we'll manipulate it further so we write 17 by 6 as 6 by 4 and 13 by 6 now we separate the two terms s plus 4 by 6 is separated and 13 by 6 is separated 4 by 6 can be written as 2 by 3 so uh, get here and to get under root 32 by 2 that is omega we multiply it by under root 32 by 3 and divide by um, the same term so this will invert okay so we were here and now let's solve it further under root 32 by 3 was written as 4 under root 2 by 3 in the uh, I1 uh, video or I1 calculation so we'll just write that here same here and simplifying further simplifying we get this 32 under root 2 divided by 24 and the two terms and now you know it exactly matches the formula that we have the first term is s plus a square or s plus 2 by 3 square and this is omega term s plus 2 by 3 and the second term matches the uh, sine term so now we are ready to go into the time domain minus 2 by 3 1 over s is ut this is 2 by 3 and e raised to the power minus 2 by 3 cos this term omega 
and similarly this constant and e raised to the power 2 by 3 and sine term. We could write ut with this, there is no problem. So this is the final answer that we have for I2 and it matches the answer in the book. This was, this is the answer given for I1. We had the exactly same term. I2 is this here, here just omitted ut because ut it is understood that the circuit is operating or we are working on for t greater than 0. So ut is 1. So you just multiply that by 1. So I hope this gives you an idea as to how to solve uh, this type of problem. You have to have, uh, you have to go step by step only then you will avoid mistakes. Thank you.